is. And they'll eat it. They'll eat that stupid yep. coffee jig. I hooked in one about six pounds of it today. Uh, <laughs> that was way back in there. That'd that be fun. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Field Trips. We got something special for you guys today. We're doing something I have never done before in my entire life. I've only ever heard of it being done one other time. We're out here in East Texas about to go wade fishing, wade fishing for crappie. The crappie are spawning. They like to get up in flooded timber, flooded sticks and bushes up real shallow and spawn. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the strategy about what we're using. I will say that we are using 14 foot fishing rods today. First time in my life doing that too. This should be really interesting. We're gonna be waiting with Gabe Spencer here from Kimber Creek Media. We're here with my beautiful girlfriend, Jennifer McGuire. Y'all know her. And we're gonna give this a shot. This is new to us. Now, we've been dealing with a bit of a weather factor. Last night, Jennifer and I actually had to go hunker down at her mother's house because there were three tornadoes on the ground in the area. One tornado we were watching on the news basically passed right over where we're at. We're gonna see. I don't know how tornadoes affect the crappie bite. We're not sure, so we're gonna get out here, give it our best. We're about to get in the water. It's not warm, y'all. And hopefully if we catch some, we're gonna cook them up for you guys later in this episode. I, did I you do make this? a real rookie mistake, you drop this piece in the water. Don't do that. You're really screwed. Don't do that. Is that mine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care. I just bought that. That thing was at least $15. <laughs> it's high dollar. <laughs> it's the reason why we use a 14 footer. Because uh, I haven't found anyone, anything longer. But, uh, so what we do with, with this is we use it to get way back up in the brush. So when we're back in that brush, um, you know, with a, even with a 12 foot rod or a 10 foot rod, you can't get in far enough. Uh, and plus, if they're on the outside of these bushes, it gives me a little more real estate between me and the fish. So um, it really, that, lo that longer rod is, is really key. You're only putting about a foot and a half of line out, so it really doesn't matter on the reel or that. It's just something to hold the line. But we're using a 10-pound mono. You can really winch those crappie out. You wouldn't think with 10-pound test, but um, pretty flexible rod, so it's, it's pretty forgiving. And we're not going to be doing much reeling, right? We're just going to no yeah. hit, hit it and we're just going to lift up. Huh? Right. Uh, and all I'm using here is a, uh, I believe this is an eighth ounce. Uh, just a, I think it's just a sickle hook. I think, I don't know who makes this, uh, Mr. Crappie, but it's a uh, a joker tail. I don't think color matters. I'm going to run a little darker color just because we got all this rain. I'm excited. I love, I love trying new things, new ways of fishing, <clears throat> new techniques. Fun, man. And of course we got some rain coming in but I think the worst of it's behind us it was pouring rain an hour ago but I think from now on we're just gonna get some sprinkles this morning you ready to do it babe I am it's gonna be good <laughs> yeah. all right so what I'm doing here is just keeping about you know two and a half three foot of line not even that much probably and so I, I, what I'll do is I'll pull it tight right to the rod tip. That way you can slide it in. You can slide it up in little small spots like this. You just give it a little shake, drop it down in there. I like to let it hit the bottom. Just pick it up for a second. Are they gonna tend to be kind of right off the bottom? Yeah. Just You're in there 15, 20 seconds, you don't get a bite. Move just on move, to the next move one. To another spot. I've noticed that they, they really tend to hang on a lot of the smaller pencil size sticks versus the base of some of these buck, this some, some of this the, buck brush. The big ones, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. and so no reeling. You're just pulling on the line there to bring it up to the That's tip. It. Just bring it up. Just move to the next spot. Yep, pick another spot. And the key is, is like you can really thread it up in there. Just get it where you want it, drop it in there. But you give it just a tiny bit of action, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. And I don't I don't really think that it makes a difference. Normally once, once you get it, they're, they they're just going to hit it. They jump right all over. Yeah, it. okay. Yeah. Move the spots a little bit better. All right. All right, so Gabe just lost two back to back, which is a good sign. He was, we were worried maybe all this rain had flushed him out, pushed him out of the, the brush, but it seems like they're here. He just lost two, one right after the other. So we're going to head over here to the side that he's at, see if we can't find some fish. Watch out, there's a stump. Yeah, I know, like slowly. Yeah. Is there alligators in here? Yeah, but <laughs> he said, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, but what? It's too cold for gators. If you're cold in those waders, gators are way too cold. Oh, you are in gator waders. It's kind of ominous. Hey. <laughs> That's 
get up here and see what we can do. No jig left behind. Jen's going in. No jig left behind. You got it? Yeah. Not be $2, but it's not $2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Good <laughs> we get hung up. First minute, she's already hung up. <laughs> Look at that, stud crappie, <laughs> right off the bat for Gabe here. Yeah. Right up in the bushes. He said they were going to be big. They're up here spawning, so there's not going to be any babies. Nope. That's a great fish, man. Yeah. That's a great crappie. Nice. Are we going to be eating good tonight? <laughs> all right, first blood for Gabe did not take long at all, and I noticed he was like up in it. I might actually go right to where he just caught that guy, see if he can see if he's got some buddies. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. No. You got it? Uh, uh, he said the, the, the rod floats. <laughs> yeah. So he said when you catch one, just let your rod dangle. But there it is. It works. Gabe wasn't fibbing. Now, I mean, I've been working every good looking cluster of twigs in here and nothing, no bites. But there it is. Not too long into the day, maybe about 15 minutes of working that's on that joker he was talking about. One thing he did say was you want to make sure your line is basically connected to the eye of the hook up top so that it sits kind of horizontally like that and you're just kind of suspending it and just the slightest twitch of the rod tip yielded a bite. And like I said, I missed him the first time. It's hard because there's all these little springy twigs and so you'll kind of brush up against one and it kind of feels like it pulls back and so a lot of it feels like bites. But this guy, that second time, there was no mistaking it. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's great eating. We're gonna keep that guy. I've got a stringer. I'm just gonna tie him off to my NRS waders here. That was a lot of fun. Hopefully we can load up on these guys. That's a pretty good crappie there. And not too far in there, actually. I I've tried some spots where I'm up in the brush, extending my arm out way up in there. And, and that guy, I kind of went to a new section, like you said, start on the outside and work your way in. And he was probably in the first five feet of the brush. So not too far from the outside. There we go, one on the stringer. We are on our way. See if we can't get some more. There we go, number two. God, what a slab. Great fish. Yeah, big white crappie. Look at that. Big female. Man, look at the mouth on that thing. <laughs> she you. Yeah. Great fish, man. Jeez, you are right. No small ones today. No small ones, man. My big pink basket. <laughs> that's cute. cute man. <laughs> Golly, that's a slab. That's what we need. That's the whole fryer we need. Yep. I got one. Nice. Another pretty good one. Yeah, not as big as Gabe's. Gabe's catching just absolute tanks. But I'll take that, number two on the board. This rod is so cool, the thing just flows. I don't have to worry about messing with this 14 foot rod. There we go. That'll eat all day. Minimum's 10 inches here in Texas. And you can keep 25 per day per person. Now we're not gonna keep that many, mostly because I gotta clean them. Number two, about to go on the stringer. We're figuring this out. It's not easy. But once you kind of got the technique down, I mean, it's just hitting as many spots as you can. I just hit, got one there on that spot, so I'm about to go right back in there and see if there aren't more than one. These fish are up here spawning shallow, and so if there's one, you shouldn't be alone. They're coming up here congregating, getting together, doing their thing. I'm gonna get this guy on the stringer and get back after it. Got a fish fry going now, guys. Hee-you! 
All right, let's drop right back in here, see if we can't yank another one out of here. It goes right about there. It was good to know, I mean, it hit it in the first, probably three seconds I had it down there. So I may stop spending so much time in each spot. And just kind of trust that if there's one there, he's going to pick it up. Come on. No way you were alone, buddy. Maybe there's some on this side of the tree. Yep. There's another. On that same tree. Right after. Oh, that's a pretty good one. This is a good one. It's fighting all over the place. Ah! Yeah. Up that same tree. Even bigger. That's a white, right? Now we're figuring something out here. I think I got the angle of the dangle down now. Stringer him up and I'm gonna go right back to that same tree. But there's three. We're not gonna starve, babe. Yeah, I say we start with this and work our way out even into that mouth. He was saying on the lake, on the main lake side, that brush can be good. But this already feels like a better depth. A little bit deeper, like a foot deeper is what that one was. You cold? <laughs> Me too. Yep. Got it. Oh, up in there. Get out of there. <laughs> oh, that was up in there. You should, you should try to get up in there. That was one of those, what I just said, like get the bite and then figure out how to get it out. I was like, oh, this is going to be tough. And I almost screwed that up. He got wrapped around that stick. <laughs> Number four. With the rod tip, you're kind of lifting. I'm, I'm doing more of a little pop. Did you get a bite? There you go. Nice. It's working. You're telling me to be ready to swim? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I wasn't ready with the camera and right when I started recording it popped off. That's my fault. <laughs> I thought I was hung up. There's a... Yeah, so water's super dirty, especially after the tornado last night. So we're using bright colors, and this is pink jig head, white body, chartreuse tail. I mean, it just looks kind of ridiculous, but got it done. Now we got dinner going, ladies and gents. It's another giant. Nice. Love it. Got it. Yep. Oh, it's a good one. They're all good ones. Number seven. So we just moved over here to the bridge. I'm sure you can hear the traffic. God, dog, we haven't pulled out a small one yet. Come over here, babe. There's some in here. I got two bites. Man, these people driving by with how cold it is, they gotta be like, what are these idiots doing? Waiting around in the river. You got one? Yeah. That's a good one. You may have to go to it. You kind of walk up the rod. Oh, he's hung up on the, here you go. 
Nice, babe. Finally got one. <laughs> I worked for you, little buddy. There it is. <laughs> Jennifer's first one of the day. Nice. Gabe with another one over there. <laughs> there you go. Nice one. There we go. Got one too, back to back with Gabe. He just land, he's landing one right now. Dang it, look at that. That's nice. Gosh, another nice crappie, look at that. You got one, Jen? Jen's on two, tripled up right now. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Ah, nice work. Love it. You got it dialed now, babe. I do, I got this. Took me a second. A little bit of learning curve. Ain't no thing now. No, I think there's a lot more in there still too. That one, is that one the size? Yeah, he's 10. We'll take him. Sounds good. Good job, ah, babe. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. Gosh, they're so shallow. That's so crazy. Just slabs, y'all. Every one is a good fish. And we came over here, this is our third spot of the day, and uh, it's just on fire right here. This thing is loaded with crappies. And we are plucking them out. <laughs> this is fun, y'all. This is fun, look at that. <laughs> Oh yeah, and there's another one. <laughs> hey buddy, what are you doing up in there? Man, haven't caught a small one yet. Man, I've lost count now. Got plenty. That's a stringer there. <laughs> Five military helicopters. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's definitely more than one. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're freezing. We got plenty of fish. We're gonna get out of here. <laughs> this is so cool. I want to come back and do it again. Will you tie those down? <sighs> Mark. It is once you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, super fun day out here with Gay Spencer Man. Thanks so good much. Time. Real good time. This was such a blast. What a unique way to catch crappie. I've only ever heard of this once. I don't know anyone that does it, and it couldn't have gone better. We got a stringer full, but we are all freezing. Jennifer had a hole in her wader. She's wet. I fell and got water in my waders. I'm shivering uncontrollably. So we're going to get out of here. We got fish to clean and fish to cook up. But man, thanks again. You bet, Appreciate man. It. You bet. That's Gabe awesome. Spencer, Kimber Creek Media. He also yeah, owns a roofing out. company. Yeah. I'll put links down in the description. Check him out. Yeah. This was awesome. I think we're going to go duck hunting sometime. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. This guy's an avid duck hunter. We're going to give that a shot next. See you guys. Bye. We'll see you guys at the filet table. <laughs> After we get warm. Come on. Man. Weatherman's been lying. <laughs> Lying up a storm. This ain't every day of the weather, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't trust him. Ew. That is what you call 
a mess of fish, you guys. We got a lot of fish to clean. We could have caught more. We lost a bunch. We honestly didn't fish for that long. But I'm gonna cut these up two ways for you guys. One way I'm real excited about, and you've never done it before. I just about guarantee it. I learned it in Mississippi. But we're gonna fry a couple of these guys whole. And there's a, very, there's, a, there's a trick to that. There's a technique to that. I'm gonna show you guys that. I'll show you how we're gonna clean the fish for that process. And then the rest of these guys, I'm gonna fillet up. And we're gonna do them, I think, in a beer batter because Jennifer, I've never cooked her beer battered fish. And I wanted to try it. So we're gonna do crappie two ways crappie whole fried and crappie beer battered fillets fried as well. It's gonna be fantastic. It's the best eating fish in fresh water. Maybe walleye can compete. Other than that, these tasty little morsels are gonna be delicious. So let me show you how we're gonna clean these up. We're gonna do this pretty quick because it's cold. And then we'll get in the kitchen. All right, so we're gonna start with the ones that we're gonna whole fry. And the first step is gonna be to gut it. And so to gut these fish, we're gonna slip our knife in the anus and cut forward. Kind of rip open this cavity here. And then I don't know another way to do it other than just getting messy. We're just gonna rip all the guts out of this fish. Never wanna leave guts and fish. All right, got the guts out. Now we'll rinse that out with the hose, but before I even get to that part, now we gotta scale these fish. So we're gonna leave the skin on the fish when we're frying it whole, but we gotta take the scales off. You don't wanna be eating scales. And so the easiest way to do that is take a spoon, and we're just gonna go backwards against the grain, and these scales are gonna flake right off. It should be pretty easy. Do not wear your nicest, your Sunday best while doing this. So we got the scales off both sides. Now the last step, we're gonna score this fish. And you'll see the width that we're gonna score this matters because this is gonna end up making these little fish finger slivers that'll peel right off the body. It's so good. So this part is very critical. And there you have it. That is the finished product. It should look like that when you get done. And then I'll show you how we're gonna cook this guy up, but this is gonna be so fantastic. And when you fry these fish whole, you can even eat the fins. It's actually probably my favorite part. Jennifer's looking a little <laughs> unsure. This is gonna be fantastic. All right, so that's how we do the whole fried one. And now I'm just gonna fillet one up. Super simple, but I'll show you anyways. It's gonna be real quick. All right, so a crappie fillets up just like any fish for the most part. We're gonna start off cutting right behind the head, kind of at an angle. And we're gonna stick our knife in on the side here. Follow this backbone all the way down on the dorsal fin through there. This is much easier with an electric knife when you got a bunch of these guys to do. And then I'm gonna angle my blade parallel to the kind of shape of the fish. Follow that rib cage in towards the center. It's really soft flesh. Part of the reason these things are so good to eat. So really easy to fillet. Voila. Your knife down a hair. And there it is. Clean, lean, organic protein. We'll give that guy a rinse as well. And since we're frying this, I'm actually gonna shave off just a little bit of this. It's kind of wasteful, but just so that our fried pieces have a better, cleaner shape to them and they cook evenly. That's it. So that's it guys, super simple process. I'm gonna get to doing the rest of these. I'm gonna let Jennifer go inside because it's freezing cold and I know she needs a shower because I can smell her from here. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep cleaning these fish up. She's gonna go get cleaned up, then I'm gonna get cleaned up and then we'll meet you guys in the kitchen and we'll show you how we're gonna cook them up. It's gonna be fantastic. I love these fish and what a cool way to catch them. See you guys here in a bit. All right, so we got the fish all cleaned up. We got ourselves cleaned up. Jennifer is my professional camera woman for the evening. Like I said, we're gonna do these crappie two ways. We're gonna do them beer battered and we're gonna fry a couple of them whole. We're gonna start off with a beer battered and this is gonna be kind of our appetizer, so to speak. So we got these fillets, super clean, beautiful looking white meat. You can't beat crappie. You just can't beat it. I've patted these dry with paper towels. Now we're gonna season the fish first. We're gonna use some Tony's, because my girl likes it and I like it, and if you don't like it, it's only because you haven't tried it. It's incredible. Tony Sacherets, my buddy Matt Scotch taught me that's how you say that. I never would have known that. 
We're gonna season these fish up, not get too crazy with it, just a light dusting on all these fillets. Then it's time to make our beer batter. Beer batter is super simple. You buy the stuff, it's a powder. We're gonna mix that in with, you guessed it, beer. We're gonna mix it together. We gotta whisk it till we get all the clumps out. Whisk it for the biscuit. I don't know why, what do I even say? <laughs> Jennifer's like, why am I dating this guy? <laughs> We're gonna whisk that up together and that's what's really nice about this. Other fried fish, you gotta do them in flour and then in egg wash and then in some breadcrumbs or cornmeal. It's a whole process. This, there's just the batter. It's beer batter, it's a wet batter. Very easy, we're gonna dunk it in the batter and then throw it in the oil. So let's get this done. And so once they're getting golden brown on one side, we wanna go ahead and flip these guys. We're gonna flip them one time. The food tastes good. Only be mad if the food tastes like food. First victim is done. Let all that grease fall off of it. And then right onto a cooling rack. Some paper towels, look at that. Now the trick to any beer battered fish, secret, top secret, don't tell anybody. Garlic salt on the fish while it's still glistening from the oil. All right, let's keep rolling through this. Well, this is no year of oh, you got it. Look at that, y'all. If that doesn't look good, you don't have taste buds. Look at this stuff. Crispy, crunchy, airy. Got that garlic salt on top. Golden brown. This is what you're looking for. If it looks like this, you nailed it. And I nailed it. Big thanks to my camera woman, Miss Jennifer McGuire. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> look at this girl. I don't know how I got so lucky. Last piece coming off now. And then we're ready to try this out. All right, we're gonna let Miss Jennifer try this one. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. You ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, moment of truth, official taste test. Pick it up. It might be hot, let's so be careful. Look at that crunch. Mmm. <laughs> Is it good? Mm -hmm. And that garlic salt on top really just ties in the flavor. Totally. And I've had crappie, and I had crappie this way. I'm just here to expand your horizons, babe. Mm-hmm. I have to talk with my mouthful. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> That's all that matters. I see you munching. I know you're hungry, which is always my strategy with the kitchen cooks, but. So hot. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Good, babe. I'm glad. Really, really great recipe. Good. I like it. I'm glad. Beer battered fish, you guys. Like, if you got someone that's not a big fish fan, this is the way to cook fish. This is like fair food, comfort food. You can't go wrong. It's hot. Are you okay? <laughs> you <got> steam? <laughs> you definitely need to let it cool before you eat it. That's good. <laughs> it is really good. And then like the Tony's and yeah. It's yeah, all the Tony's good. adds just the tiniest hint of heat. Didn't put much on it. But the garlic salt, you guys, that is the trick. And this is so easy to do. Even if you have no idea how to cook, you cannot mess this up, really. Once it's golden brown on both sides, the fish is going to be cooked through. You don't have to worry about that. It's still steaming, but I don't even care. And it's still... It's good. It's really, really, you just like, <laughs> steam just <laughs> came out of your mouth. Fantastic. Nailed it. Beer battered fish, bulletproof, fail proof. You can't do it wrong. 
So good. That's so good. And not only that, like today's fishing of just catching every fish was just nice, beautiful sized crappie. We didn't catch a single small crappie uh -uh. today. They were all jumbo crappie. That was mm -hmm. so much fun. What a unique way to catch them. This girl has caught many crappie. In fact, when I first met her, she, invi she invited me and I got to meet her kids and her father. One of the more nerve wracking days of my life until we started fishing. Yeah. We caught a bunch of crappie. This girl can catch some crappie, but what we did today, that was something different. Yeah, that this was something was different. new. It was just fun. It took me a little bit longer to kind of catch on to it. Dialogue. Just that little jigging for crappie, like in my mind, I'm just like, yeah. I just different. leave a minnow in the butt, like just drop the <laughs> minnow down, so I'm just gonna hit it. So this is a little bit different, but once I figured out, like, just had to hold the line, just kind of barely. Just came it was through. fun. I like it a little was. learning curve. I like a little challenge. That was a good time. And that's some good fish. That's good. Mm -hmm. Look at this just beautiful white meat. So clean. And that golden crunch on the outside. Golly. Doesn't get any better. Jen's not lying to you guys because she is shoveling it in her face right now. So don't think that she's just being nice to her boyfriend. No, if I don't like something, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm not sure about this mustard hold. Well, just hold on. Keep the faith. <laughs> Keep the faith. It's going to be good, too. It's going to no. be different, but it's going to be good. I'm excited to try it. I'm glad you like this one. I'm at least 50% now. I'm at least yeah. one out of two. This one is excellent. All right, we're going to munch on this. It's hot. And then we're going we're gonna to cook them up whole fried next. Get ready. Mom, Mom's going to... Slap me next time she sees me. Mm. Talking with my mouth full. <laughs> Gonna be good. Don't go anywhere. Bad influence. Don't go anywhere. I feel like I'm on Food Network. Mm -hmm. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Oh, oh for good. <laughs> All right. So now for the more technical fish cooking, it's really pretty easy too. We got these two whole scaled, scored, gutted crappies. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna first slather some yellow mustard on these bad boys. And now Jennifer, you can't see her face, she's cringing. <laughs> Jennifer hates yellow mustard with a passion. So I'm gonna give her a pass if she doesn't like this recipe, but I'm telling you, you will not taste the mustard. I've been telling her, you're not gonna taste the mustard in this. We're using mustard as basically a binder to bind our cornmeal, which is what we're gonna batter these guys in. So first we're gonna slather them in mustard all up in there, up in the cracks, in these scored crevices. Get mustard all over this guy. You're not even gonna taste it. Then we're gonna put them down in the cornmeal, dredge them in cornmeal, make sure we get in all those cracks all over this fish. We wanna cover it in cornmeal. We've added some Tony's seasoning to the cornmeal. We're also gonna sprinkle a little Tony's on top of that when we're done. And then these guys are gonna go straight into the oil and we're gonna fry them up and I'll show you how we're gonna know when they're ready. Now I'm reusing the oil from the beer batter. Wouldn't recommend it, get new oil, but it's just me and Jennifer, no big deal. The other problem I got is that, and I realized I goofed big time, I picked the too big crappie to do whole fried, but I got this little bitty pan. So this is gonna take a little finagling. It's not gonna turn out perfect because I'm gonna have to basically fry part of it and then like shift it to get the, the tail end. Not ideal, you really need a, a bigger skillet for this or smaller crappie, whichever you prefer, up to you. But it's gonna work out fine. We just gotta make sure it all gets cooked through. But these guys are ready. We're gonna drop this first guy in. We're gonna lay it in gently. And that's what we're looking for. Except for the fact that it doesn't fit. But that sizzle is what we're looking for. That's perfect. All right, we're gonna shift this guy forward. Just show that tail in some love. Mm -hmm. All right, now it's time to flip this guy. Oh. All right, I'll be honest, guys. We got some serious separation here in these layers. I don't know if that's because I just overcooked it or what, but that's not exactly how it's supposed to look. So we're going to really find out here on this taste test if your boy messed this up or not. I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. It's like zombie fish. We'll get back to here in a minute. I'll tell you what I did wrong. I think it's still gonna be good though. I know it's still gonna be good. It just might not be great. <laughs> All right, I think this is done. I don't wanna cook it to death. I think I maybe already cooked it to death. We're gonna find out. Falling apart. Which tells me I did, in fact, overcook it. Woo. Literally oh, falling God. apart. I think I needed two tongs, not one. It's okay. Just like mommy used to make it, right, babe? Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Especially with the eyeball. Yeah. Yep. The eyeball really makes it. Mm. No, these are going to be good. This is going to come right off the bone. You're going to like this. Thanks. For us. Whatever steers you wrong. Yes. What? Don't, what? Mm -hmm. Don't be honest on YouTube. All right, we're gonna throw the second one in here. Let that bad boy go while we taste this. Zombie fish. Yeah, okay. Not the prettiest presentation. I'm, I goofed a little bit, but it's still gonna taste good. I bet. I really do. I think it will. All right, guys, here's attempt number two. Looking better, way better. He is not frying it with super, super hot grease. Can't go crazy with the temperature. Drop the temperature down. This one's looking better. All right, number two. Coming out. Looks right. It's fitting to find out. So the whole idea here is because we scored it, it, it comes off in these little, little sheets, little nuggets. Oh gosh. And it comes right off and you get some meat, little skin with that crust. That is kind of the perfect bite. It comes right off the bone. You don't have to worry about the bones. You're gonna like that, babe. Okay. You're gonna like that. I'm trusting you. It's really good. Let's get you off a little nugget. Let's try it. We okay. got this skin on it. Yep, yep. Why don't you close your eyes like you're scared? I was really wanting to take in the flavors. <laughs> I like it. It's not bad. And I hate mustard. I was really worried. It does not taste. I don't taste mustard. For once, that's the true thing. I don't taste the mustard in it. It's going for a second bite, you guys. We're calling that a win. It's not it's bad, right? Good. And I'm telling you, I did not execute, I did not nail this execution. It tastes so, excellent. So, even though it may not look good, it tastes great. Bad babe. Mm -hmm. I love you. Thanks for lying oh. to my audience. <laughs> no, I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm a really bad liar. You would totally know if I was lying. By the way, you guys can cop a field trips tea. www.yakfish.tv. Check it out. Look how good <laughs> she looks in it. You won't look that good, but you might look all right. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for this Catch and Cook. Thanks so much for joining us. Huge thanks to Gabe Spencer for taking us out, showing us a new way to catch crappie. That was such a blast. Check him out, Kimber Creek Media. Accurate roofing. If you got roofing damage in East Texas, hit this guy up. His company is incredible. I'll put links down to that in the description. But thanks so much. Thanks to my wonderful, beautiful, amazing girlfriend for putting up with me and doing this and helping me with it for trying the mustard fish I loved it. It's I loved good. It, all. it really is good you guys. It really is good I didn't know the execution basically just because the oil was too hot, but this recipe is so incredible We had it in Mississippi and it was literally life-changing. I didn't nail it my first time trying it, but It is fantastic. You should try it get good with it But if not do the beer batter fish you can't mess it up But that's gonna do it for this time Thank you guys so much for watching to the end. Appreciate it so much. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff if you feel like it. If not, or if so, we'll see you next week. This is awesome. Crabby fishing, y'all. The crabby fishing is amazing. Yeah. I definitely love doing that. Catch, I should do that again. Catch some crappie. You can't even screw up the recipe. I tried my hardest. You can't screw it up. It's still good. It is good. It really is. <laughs> see you guys next week. Thanks so much. That's good, babe. It is good.
You can spit it out now. They're not watching. <laughs>